We've got all of these asylum seekers abusing the system and coming through uh, to the interior of the country. We've talked a lot about all of these, you know, the flights that they're able to take, the money that they're being given, the uh, pink slip. They're like, do you, Super Pinky, promise to show up in court in the year 2032? And they're like, yes, I super duper pinky promise that I will show up. Wink, wink. Okay, great. You're good to go. And I just couldn't, I could not believe what I was watching this morning when I was on Twitter. And I watched this. It's like a local news report um, of an airport. And they're like, well, make sure you show up uh, really, really, really early for your flight because you could be bumped for all of these illegal immigrants. Watch. Border airline passengers are advised to check in with your airline's mobile app as soon as possible, up to 24 hours in advance, and arrive at the airport with at least two hours before your plane takes off. That's because asylum seekers illegally released by the Department of Homeland Security are waiting on standby for seats. And if you aren't at the boarding gate when agents start to fill empty seats, you could be bumped. That's what happened to Joel Cavazos. He bought tickets to L.A. from McAllen. He says he had trouble checking in on the American Airlines app and even arrived at the airport an hour before his flight. Cavazos says he checked in here with TSA, but by the time he got through the checkpoint, the boarding agent told him he had been bumped from the flight. No, they weren't polite at all. I mean, the, the initial response was... You missed your flight. We gave your ticket to someone else. Like, <laughs> the audacity of these people. And by the way, I, I said this uh, probably was a year ago, um, maybe longer, when I was traveling through DFW. It's not just McAllen. It's everywhere. Because when I was traveling through DFW a very long time ago, um, I saw all of these elite, well, I should be, I should be, Nice. Objective. Yeah. I don't know that they were here illegally, but they all clearly were coming from another country and none of them spoke English and they all were being escorted by this one, you know, attendant to them. And I I'm just going to assume yes. that they were coming in through the same process. And I was standing there waiting in the TSA line and they stopped me and funneled these people right on through. So they got they get priority through TSA, which, by the way, sometimes they don't even have documents. They don't have the, the license that you have to hold up to TSA to make sure that you can get through. They don't have those oftentimes, but they're still going to get right on through. They get priority there. They get to take your seat on the plane and then they get to come to a city near you where they get to keep your kids out of school because they get a cot in your kid's school and then you don't even get to, well, I mean, honestly, that's probably a good thing that these kids aren't able to go to the public school system. I'm sure <laughs> Eric would be that's, like, that's actually a relief. Line, maybe? That's Civil a relief. Line. It's, I mean, I, they're not getting educated, but your tax money is still going towards your kids going to the school that they are not going to because all of these illegals are being housed there. And it's just like, when is enough going to be enough of these people taking priority over American citizens? For And, and not even like, I just... Joe Biden, it's an election year. Like, what what are you doing if not just for optics to finally do something about it? Now, I guess at this point, it's like or maybe maybe he helps himself by doing something now. Yeah. Right. Like, does he help himself in the election if he does something now? Because at this point, it's like, well, it's already gone to shit. So maybe we just wait until November and hope that he doesn't do any, anything and we can course correct once we get Donald Trump back in. Yeah. Uh, apparently, I saw a news article recently that Biden was now considering taking executive action. Mm. To close the border. So that whole yes. border deal that they negotiated, you didn't actually need that at all. You, per, Biden could has the laws on the books that he could stop uh -huh. this tomorrow. Uh -huh. uh, the problem is they don't want to stop it. They've already imported... Uh, there was a report that said they have already imported uh, more people than the populations of 36 states in America. That's crazy. But uh, to what you're saying, Sarah, we are now relegated to being treated like second class yes. citizens while these invaders who never paid into the system, who don't do anything, they're not here to benefit our economy. They get treated like first class citizens and they get priority. Um, so, yeah, it, it's very very uh, radicalizing. And I think, you know, in 2024, what does a legitimate election even look like with 50, 60, 70 million illegal immigrants in your country? Uh, I would like to see the GOP propose a law that designates all of their voters as undocumented 
or asylum seekers. Because if we don't have, why do we have to follow laws, but yeah. they don't? It doesn't yeah. make any sense. Yeah, yeah. To Logan's point, um, I know that uh, House Speaker Mike Johnson actually released a, a public statement on Joe Biden considering executive action. He said, Americans have lost faith in this president and won't be fooled by election year gimmicks that don't actually secure the border, nor will they forget that this president created this catastrophe and until now has refused to use his executive power to fix it, which we've been calling for this entire time. And he's like, it's not up to me, it's up to Congress. And it's just really cute too, Eric, because he talks about, well, I well, since Congress won't do anything, I might have to actually put pen to paper and do it. And it's like the the deal that you wanted Congress to pass was not going to do anything to secure the damn border. You were sending more money to Ukraine and Israel and all of these other pet projects than you wanted to spend on the border. And you're going to try to tell me that Congress didn't do their job because if you provided the GOP a plan that actually secured the border, didn't send money down there for more border patrol agents to process these people, but actually secured the border, they would have passed it unanimously. Like it's a joke that he's like, oh, shame on Congress for not wanting to do anything about border security as if their bill actually did that. Yeah, this was interesting because I do feel like uh, mainly because it's starting to impact a lot of different types of uh, demographics that you're starting to see public opinion shift a little bit on this on this issue. Um, it was easy for people to have this sort of pro mass um, migration position when it didn't really mm -hmm. impact them in some sort of way. But now that it does, you're seeing in various other communities that are like, look, mainly because to your point, like they're being they're not being prioritized or rather they are being, let's say, the, the immigrants or migrants, whatever you want to call them, are Legals. being prioritized yeah, over over the American people and, and making it a severe inconvenience in very other other ways. So that. It's starting to manifest uh, and, and, and come about in different ways that impact the American people. So you're starting to see a shift um, on that. But I think that's the larger conversation there is that and, and one that we should be happening uh, or should happen. And that's the economics of it. Mm -hmm. I do wonder if I, they have to be the, the state has to be paying these um, airlines in some capacity, what those numbers are, I have no idea. Yes. I'm sure if I dug deep enough, I could I could for sure find. Oh, Maybe Eric, a request. I don't know. Are you accusing the airlines of not doing it out of the kindness of their own <laughs> hearts, providing this charity to these people? You mean to tell me it's all about the money? They're getting laced of. Uh, for wow. Sure. Uh, that, that's the only reason why they would uh, bump someone off of a plane. Um, because that seat is already paid for. They're getting they're getting their pockets lined up in some way. And I, you know, I wonder what those numbers those numbers are. So Joe Biden has uh, and the Democrats in general, they they this in a, isn't a something that they have to actually address now. And it's beyond just lip service, because I think people up there, even in their own base, especially in the New Yorks of the world now, yeah, yeah. They're, they're seeing it and they're like, this is wrong. You're mm -hmm. prioritizing these people uh, over folks that are already stolen from um, and have been for the last, you know, several decades. Yeah. And I think, too, I mean, th look, he could take steps to try to shut down the influx that is occurring right now. But the problem will remain. You can't put the genie back in the bottle when you have this many people already here. Where are they going to well, go? It, it would require some sort of like uh, very, uh, and, and it would, I don't know if a lot of people would get on board with it, but it would require like something very, very aggressive to mass to, deportation, to, yeah, like, which like, Joe Biden will never that's do. That's what I'm saying. Like that's, that's what a lot of people, that's an com uncomfortable conversation for a lot not of people. Not for me. But <laughs> not, not for anybody. I use that term as often as I can. <laughs> for sure. But that's what it would look like. That It, 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 it would for sure have to look like, if, it, if it's actually going to get resolved, right. that's what it's going to have to look like for sure. And I think like just the uh, general economic stability, and this includes, includes private businesses, your infrastructure is not built to house all of these people and take care of them. It's not. This is an example. It's it's maybe light, but it is an example when you look at, let's say, people getting bumped off of airlines and stuff. That's what's going to in inevitably end up happening mm -hmm. if you are going to have to try to handle these sorts of people. You're not ready for it. It's called culture shock as well. It's not just with, with economics. It's also from a cultural perspective. And that's what needs to be talked about. Yes, you have this issue of rights that I know folks want to discuss, as I've said before, when you deal with something like that, that the states monopolize in terms of its border. 
There's going to be injustices happening on both ends. So we already recognize that that's going to be a thing. However, there's that other issue that people don't want to necessarily talk about. And they now have to because they're being forced to. Yeah, Logan. Yeah, I mean, it, it, for anyone who thinks diversity is our strength, I would encourage mm-hmm. you to walk around a mall in America in 2024. Uh, it is 100 percent not our strength. This, these people that come here again what, what, to what he said, the culture shock. We are importing people from God knows where. Yeah. It, it, people that have nothing in common with American history, with the American way of life, any of it. Mm-hmm. So this is going to be very, very uh, destabilizing for the system across the board. And immigration is the number one issue because it calls into question all the other issues. Housing, the economy, uh, yeah. laws. That's the part that I think isn't talked about enough. Yeah, and so uh, that is why that's the number one issue. And we'll see Trump has promised mass deportations. I hope he gets in there and is able to do it. Oh my gosh, when Stephen Miller uh, tweeted out, he was like, mass deportations begin at noon on inauguration day. day. <laughs> I was like, hell yeah! <laughs> if you like this clip and you want to see the full episode, Click here, and if you want to subscribe to the channel, come on, you know you do. Click here.